had hit the gap. Uh, I want to call this meeting to order. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. I forgot we weren't having a uh, character in. Um, I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd please stand. And Mr. Oliver's going to direct us. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And then, Mr. Draper, will you lead, lead everybody or uh, give us the mission statement? Yes. Beaufort County Schools will provide quality educational programs and services to enhance student academic and vocational success. Thank you. And I'm told we don't have any public comments, so we're just going to keep right on going. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, next, we've got approval of the minutes, and there's a lot of them. So if some of you weren't here, go ahead and let uh, Lisa know. You weren't here, but you were here by phone. It's my phone, but I'm not sure which. I told you. I can't remember. Here. That was a long time ago. <laughs> you, you were here by phone for, for both the, yeah. the first two. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? I think everybody else was here throughout uh, November and December. Um, I need. I entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, keep right on going. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. T. W. Allen, is taking care of our public recognition tonight. Mr. Doan. Yes, ma'am. All right. Excuse me, sir. All right, first thing we want to do tonight is recognize our uh, the Beaufort County Schools Christmas card art winner. Uh, the artwork was submitted by Ms. Ms. Nicole Yance. I think Ms. Yance is here. If she will come up forward. We have a certificate for her along with a set of Christmas cards for her to use and her original artwork to be returned. Mm -hmm. and we're going to have a picture on the big screen as well, but for those of you that have really good eyesight, there's a small version. All right, or you should have gotten one in the mail. Thank you very much. I hope. Um, and if you would, let me say one other thing before I get you to greet the board. Uh, Ms. Yance, her art teacher is Mr. Damon Walcott. Mr. Walcott is here as well. Um, this is pure coincidence, and we will have Mr. Walcott back at a future meeting, but just literally under within the last hour, Mr. Walcott was notified that he is the Region 1 Teacher of the Year for the Northeast Region. So he went from being the Washington High School Teacher of the Year to Beaufort County Schools Teacher of the Year to being one of eight finalists for Teacher of the Year of the state. So we're very proud of Mr. Walcott. And, and Ms. Yant said he owes it all to her. <laughs> so, and so, but we will like to have him back at a later date. But that just kind of sprung that on us. So, but we want to thank Ms. Yant for her Christmas card. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very good. Appreciate that. We'll get a picture, okay? Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. It's a beautiful car. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The second group of folks that I want to recognize tonight, we have, um, for those that aren't familiar with National Board Certification, 
It is a way to recognize the accomplished teaching that's occurring in our classrooms. This is a process based on high and rigorous standards that evaluate teaching practice through performance-based assessments. This process is designed to collect standards-based evidence of accomplished teaching across four different components, content knowledge, differentiation and instruction, teaching practice and classroom environment, and re effective and reflective practitioner. And we're very fortunate to have one newly certified National Board teacher with us and three folks who are able to renew their certification. And so I want to call those folks up at this time and give them a certificate as well. All right, first person, our newly certified National Board teacher is Ms. Ashley Autry from Washington High School. Congratulations. 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 And our outstanding educators who were renewed their certification are Ms. Tony Taylor from Bath Elementary School. Ms. Tracy Solano from John Cotton Taylor. I'm not sure if Ms. Solano is able to join us. And Ms. Heather Hall from Chocolate Primary School. All right, a few ladies will greet the board and then we'll get a picture. Ashley, you'll come back up. Congratulations. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. And our last recognition of the evening, each year the North Carolina Council of Teachers of Mathematics recognizes one teacher from each LEA across the state that represents superior instruction in mathematics. The teacher selected from each LEA receives a one-year membership in the North Carolina Council of Teachers of Mathematics, recognition at the State Mathematics Conference, and a special memento of the occasion. And this year, the selection for Bover County Schools was Mr. Cougar Caroon from the Bover County Early College. Congratulations, sir. If you'll greet the board. Congratulations. Thank you. And that does it for the recognition part of our meeting. So those of you that would like to scoot on out, I, you're welcome to stay. But uh, I know it's a busy time of year, so we're going to let you scoot on out if you'd like. <coughs> Merry Christmas Thank to you. all Thank of you. you. <laughs> Love on that puppy. <laughs> Oh, clear the room. Uh, now, could I have a motion for <coughs> closed session, please? I move that we go into closed session pursuant to General Statute 143318.11A1 to prevent disclosure of confidential personnel files under General Statute 115C321 and to consult with our attorney to consider and give instructions concerning the potential or actual claim, administrative procedure, or judicial action. The title of the action is 18 CBS 157. Nursba versus Beaufort County Schools. Got to get a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried and we are in closed session. Uh, st we're going to uh, jump ahead and let Stan go Ooh. first. We'll see, uh, approve our personnel oh, agenda. yeah. Uh, I need a, a, a motion to approve our personnel agenda. Move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. All right, Stan. Okay. Good afternoon. 
Hey, here's a brief update of what we've got going on at the present time with our 18-19 um, budget over the holiday break. Um, Ed Tech Media Center roof replacement is scheduled um, to start on the 26th with Curtis Construction of Kinston, and they um, opted out to be completed by the 31st. They actually plan to be finished by that Friday, but they put a 31st date as a cleanup day, um, weather permitting. Um, Southside High School main drive repaving is still in the same process it was last time. They've been unable to get out due to all of our rains and the water on that property, but they're hoping they'll have a dry spell over the holiday break when nobody's on the campus. Um, Southside High School chiller replacement. Um, the new chillers are in Chocowinity at OBI, um, stored there. Um, Piedmont Service Group will be starting um, this Friday on the dismantling of the existing chillers and they will be setting the new chillers um, on Wednesday the 26th. Um, and we'll have them up and going and started by the 31st. We have our automation contractor scheduled um, to do our online stuff and get us set up online back where we can manage the system. And Pete Lee and I will be supervising that installation over the holiday break. Um, SW Snowden HVAC HVAC replacement to 300 building. This has been completed by Robertson Heaton and Air for $8,325. This was an add-on to our 2018-19 capital project due to our failure. Um, just an update on plan operations, um, flood recovery. Mr. Rob Malone, our attorney, approved our RFP and provided us with construction contracts. Um, both items have been posted on the Beaufort County School website and on the hub per FEMA requirements, and our bids will be due back on January 7th of 2019. And we've had three of our local contractors to already contact us, and one of them have been on site to physically look at the facility. Any questions? Uh, how, how are we um, on the uh, insurance on that? We have not gotten the quotes yet. Um, FEMA did the walkthrough for the estimations on the calculations of the square footage. Those documents have been sent to their representative to do the calculations. So when we do get the insurance settlement, we can compare the two to make sure that they do match, as well as compare them to the bid. FEMA says unless we're satisfied, they don't sign their document, and we can hopefully negotiate where we're going. Have, have we given any consideration to possibly relocating plant ops to a different place? I mean, I, I know we're pay, paying a fortune in flood insurance, and then to pay that in flood insurance, and then still have it. I mean, I know flood insurance pays for getting flooded, but uh, to have to do this, and, I, I mean, it, this is going to happen again. I mean, it's Absolutely. just. Um, they, could we get into some kind of discussion with FEMA of, of maybe relocating and using the, those funds to relocate? Is, it, is that a possibility? I can ask. The only thing that bothers me to agree is that we spent $131,000 in the first period to go in and get the bill. To go and get rid of the hazardous waste. And that would have been something that probably we should have talked about before we discussed our settlement with the insurance company. Probably yes. So but right, but in on, on residential flooding, uh, there are people that over the last probably 10 to 15 years have had repetitive loss, totaling probably anywhere from 30 to 70 thousand, where their homes have had to be redone and redone and redone, not to the point that they were totaled. So FEMA just kept doing them, but after the repetitive loss, usually FEMA steps in and goes like Butch said. Uh, we need to do something different here. We're not going to keep doing this. I would say that that would have been before anything was done after. Like, we would have spent, you know, $250,000 $250, finishing this floor. Mm -hmm. If we have a, a second flood, that would be where we should have that conversation, not after we've already spent the gun first. Well, I, I, I but think, I will check yeah, and I think the record should reflect that we are interested in that conversation. Yeah. If there's another flood before any agreements are made to start rehabbing a building, I think that needs to be seriously investigated. Because Butch is right, we could just keep redoing this and redoing this. And I don't know of anybody that pays 100% of the damage. Are so, we going to get 100% yeah, reimbursement? We're, we're what, 131 in 131, plus put is, back. According to the flood insurance folks, their service for a contract, they we were told that they would pay to go ahead and have it gutted and cleaned for the mold and 
preventative measures on the mm -hmm. project. So that, that's where we can move forward. Right now, we still don't know the insurance payout for the complete renovation. Right. What's Around the cost of the total rehab? Or better for reconstruction side back. So we're looking at spending two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a building. Is it even worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars? In the tax book, it's worth a whole lot more than that. Um, they, which they don't consider it being in the flood zone. They don't look at that side of it. They uh, look at its taxable property. So, and we're paying any extra money to put into it. And the way we're reconstructing, we're putting it back as residential with sheetrock this time. So that in the in the if we do have flooding again, we can come in and cut four inches off instead of having to tear and gut the whole building. But that's roughly what we had in the building between three and four inches. There was a five inch line outside. Of course, it wicked up, but it got between the plywood of the city when it was the city school and the paneling of when it was made by the county offices, and the mold just took off between those paneling and then plywood. So, because it was stage three stormwater, sewer, river water came in on us. So. Any other? Uh, you've got the request. Yes, ma'am. Um, we've had a unit uh, fail at Chakawindy Primary School in room 302. Um, the compressors failed in this unit, and according to Brian Alligood, our HVAC tech, it's but about 10 years ago it did the same. The unit's 28 years old. Um, we received two quotes that we have attached to your document. And as my recommendation, if y'all approve funding, or spend the funding, um, to move forward, advance our solution of Washington in the amount of four thousand forty-one dollars and nine cent, and this is including installation and taxes. Was this on our? No, this is a new capital item, and we would be coming from our capital fund balance, which is roughly about uh, twenty thousand dollars right now. Willie Mac knew I was going to ask that before. <laughs> Did the savings from the wall behind Trevor? The savings for contingencies are around twenty-six thousand forty-one dollars. Okay, so we have that. Not that we want to spend it, but we need to spend it. We'll be coming back for another one as well after Christmas fit Snowden. Oh, okay. Okay. Anything else? That's it. I need a. Need a. Uh, I'm going to need a motion then to approve the request of approval of the four thousand. I don't remember what it was. Forty-one dollars. Four thousand forty-one dollars for Chuckwing Primary HVAC system. So moved. Second. Second. All those approved? No. Uh, 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 anybody disapprove? Motion carried. Just thinking that uh, if anything under five, it didn't have to come to us. Is that not right? When it's new like that. When it's new like that, is that? <coughs> okay. right. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. You too. You too. Right. Now we're to the Sorry. academic presentation part. Mr. Smith from Easter Elementary is going to start us off tonight. No. Cut out my interpretive dance for me. <laughs> uh, so you're welcome. <laughs> you just remember what we agreed upon out there. Right, right, yeah, okay. Uh, well, good evening. Thank you for having me here. And uh, I am going to keep this rather short, uh, but uh, just want to uh, go over a few pieces of data that are shaping the conversations and some of the things we're doing at Eastern this year. Uh, so starting here with uh, this first slide, uh, what you're seeing right now is our uh, growth measures of EVOS for 16-17 school year and 17-18 school year. Uh, this is some good news. If you look, the vast majority of our teachers in their classroom uh, either met or exceeded growth in uh, the 16-17 school year and 7.7 .7 did not meet expected growth, and that was two teachers. That's what those numbers represent. Uh, then even better in 1718, uh, we still had two teachers uh, not meeting expected growth. One of those teachers is the same teacher as the year before. Another one went up, and another one dropped down. But the real good news there is if you look, uh, we went from 26 uh, percent of our, student, our teachers rather exceeding growth to 39. Uh, and that's, I believe, from seven teachers to 11 teachers. And, you know, just in layman's terms, just as a reminder, you know, when, when their students are making expected growth, that means they are growing one year worth of, you know, academic gain. And if they're exceeding growth, that's exceeding a year's 
academic gain. And then uh, not meeting growth means that they're not meeting the expected growth. So that's, that's good news in some ways, and it's an important part of our conversation uh, when we get into what do we need to do better. Uh, moving on, uh, this is uh, our, in layman's term, phonics composite. Uh, we measure with M class and Dibbles, uh, and the Dibbles piece is more your, your sound fluency, your decoding, things that, uh, you know, the nuts and bolts, the mechanics of reading. And if you look, uh, the district for K-1 was 73%, and Eastern Elementary School is 65%. So good, not great, but, uh, you know, when you consider that our students make up over half of those students in that district number, uh, I, I, I feel pretty good about that. Uh, so what that tells us is that our phonics instruction is, is doing well, relatively well, but we can do better. Now where the hard conversation comes in, moving on to the next one, is our reading comprehension. So when we do an in-class assessment, there's the Dibbles piece, which again is the phonics, and then there's the TRC, which is reading comprehension. And when we compare that to the district average, we are definitely not where we want to be. Uh, you know, I've worked in low-performing schools before, and we, would, we were happy with 65% if, if we were making that sometimes. But looking at this reading comprehension piece, 46% is definitely not where we want to be. So uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, uh, well, actually, one more piece about the, the, the growth piece. Uh, I'm not going to move back slides, but uh, I skipped a note here. Uh, when we're talking about making a year's growth, the catch is that when you start behind, a year's growth is not enough. And that's leading a lot of the conversation that we're having as far as academics go at Eastern Elementary School. And you know, we're saying obviously the vast majority of our teachers here are growing their students. They're growing them at least a year. Some of them more than a year. So we, we look at those numbers and then say, but at the same time here we are with only 46% of our students are where they need to be with the reading comprehension. So, you know, the conversation that we then have as a staff, as a faculty, mm -hmm. is we're obviously doing good things, but we need to do even better. And that's going to kind of take us to uh, what we're doing with this data. So looking at this, uh, this year we, we have a school-wide focus on data-driven instruction and increased teacher support through the following phase. Now I will go ahead and say, uh, every time I hear anyone say data-driven instruction, I roll my eyes because that's what everybody says. So uh, what I'm points I'm going to go through are the specific ways that we are trying to use data in our school. And uh, this is uh, a bit of a new paradigm at Eastern, is my feeling. Uh, I think that it's just been kind of up and down, and we're really trying to put some things in that, that will work school-wide. And you all know that's tough at Eastern, because we have 15 of each grade level, K-1. Yeah. So getting everyone on the same page and doing the same thing is, is very dif difficult. Uh, in a traditional school, you have four kindergarten teachers or five kindergarten teachers. They can all get in the same room and plan at the same time. During our day, that's not possible. So we are doing things to try and uh, to pick up where we have some organizational hurdles. So the first one uh, that we did is we reconceptualized our Title I position. Uh, so our Title I teacher right now has three days for small group intervention, so she's pulling students three days a week and doing small group one-on-one, -on -one or not small group two one-on-one -on -one <laughs> instruction, as few as one student, as many as four, and that's, that's where we capped that out. Uh, but then on the other two days, which are Wednesday and Friday, on Wednesday we're doing weekly data meetings, and teachers are examining data to inform classroom practices. What that really looks like, and this has been the heavy lift, I'll tell you at Eastern, is putting this in place and sticking to it. Uh, we know that teacher time is very valuable. It's fleeting. They have a lot to do. So doing it, sticking with it so that people see the value and start to see the value has been tough. But I, my opinion is that we're starting to see some, some cracks of light coming through there because the first several times it, the the value of it necessarily isn't self-evident the first time you sit in a data meeting. Uh, it can be very overwhelming. Uh, so I just wanted to talk to you about one example 
of what when I say we're data driven and we're having data meetings what that looks like at Eastern Elementary School because I don't want to just throw buzzwords at you and say we're doing a great job data 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 okay last week what we did was uh, each pod would come in and they would bring some of their student assessments and we looked at what's called MSV meaning syntax and visual and so what we're doing is we're looking when the teachers are progress monitoring looking at where the students are making mistakes we see that they have a mistake they missed that word well that's great they missed the word but why did they miss the word and so what we're doing with those students is we are digging in is it that they didn't understand the meaning of the word was it the syntax of the word how it worked in the sentence or was there a visual piece where you know they looked at a boat and the word was ship and they said the word boat okay. these are examples of how we're trying to use the data and go into the data at the student level to inform our instruction that we're saying okay teachers here's what we're going to do as a school these are practices we're going to use we know that the student missed the word but for you to remediate and to get that student where he or she needs to go what we need to do is know why are they making that mistake so that we can properly help them move forward uh, the analogy I have is you know be like going to the doctor well I'm sick well that's all good and well but for a doctor to help you they have to know what your symptoms are you know ask you questions find out what it is that's making you sick so that they can have a corrective course of action that's what we're doing in these data meetings uh, this is an evolution of culture at Eastern Elementary School but that's when I say data driven that's what I'm talking about these are the things that we're trying to do <coughs> not just say where are your students let's put them in in, a, in the you know let's put them in small groups and remediate them those are big ideas that everybody in education throws around these are specific things that we're trying to do at Eastern to, to pinpoint and really get surgical on where student needs are so that we can help them move forward at a faster rate uh, so that's what the, our data meetings look like uh, the next thing that our uh, our title one teacher is doing and this is another big thing and you ask anyone especially in the lower grades where is the real learning going to take place with the reading instruction it's in your guided reading groups and Eastern has been saying that they do guided reading and we do guided reading but there it looks very different from room to room and class to class and although we do like teachers to have autonomy there's there are not enough there have not been enough common practices going on so that we know exactly what it's supposed to look like and it's not that the teachers are lazy it's not that the teachers are trying they just don't know lots of them so we're doing a number of things to help them with their guided reading because when I talk about we're getting surgical with the data that's going to inform what that small group guided reading instruction is going to look like so one feeds into the other and so our title one teacher miss Lily she uh, every Friday she's going in and helping teachers with their guided reading she's observing their guided reading and then saying listen I saw this going on this was really good do that some more I saw this you might want to tweak this and she is the reason she was chosen for the job was she's very knowledgeable and effective in the classroom when she was a teacher so she is quite an authority and, and a really good resource for these teacher also she was part of the staff so the, the teachers I hope know that you know that it's not a gotcha she's not going in there to go tell mr. Smith that they're not doing it right we don't have those conversations we we don't you know what she comes and tells me is this is what we were working on not they're doing this they're not doing that uh, to support that guided reading uh, so we have the coach uh, we've already done a redip of guided reading uh, professional development for our k-1 teachers where uh, Nancy Phipps has come in she did it with our kindergarten the other day uh, and she's coming back on January 10th for our first grade teachers uh, we've allocated some funds for school-wide learning walks so every k-1 teacher is going to get a sub for a day and they're going to spend that day going around the school and seeing how other people in the building do it because they know how that's working in their pod but they don't know how it's working elsewhere so and we have a protocol that we're going to use uh, so that they're asking intentional questions that they're there are specific things that they're looking for and so they're going to be able to learn for themselves but the other thing they're going to be able to do is give feedback to the teachers on what they see um, 
Another thing new this year is uh, required weekly, and actually it's bi-weekly, uh, I apologize for that, required bi-weekly intervention plans for all Tier 2 students. So when they notice a student is having trouble or that a student is not responding just to the general instruction, we're, we're looking at ways that we can intervene to help them. And again, we're trying to get away from just throw stuff at the wall and say, well, I'm working with them one-on-one. -on -one. They're going with a teacher and doing this. We're saying, okay, what is it that you're doing? What are you trying to accomplish? And so those <coughs> intervention sheets that they turn in, they have the baseline of where the student is, what the student's goal is going to be, and what intervention they're going to use. And so what those intervention sheets, and they turn them in in my office every two weeks, is it will look and say, okay, uh, you know, little Seth, not doing too well, so we want him to improve his sight word recognition. This is his baseline. We've done this for a week. After two weeks, we're measuring to see if what we're doing is working or not. We're not waiting till the end of the year to say, oh, we hope it all shakes out in the end. Because if it's not working, then we can be quick and agile and change what we're doing. But if it is working, then we know, hey, rock on, folks. Let's keep doing this. Um, another thing we're doing, specials teachers, so our art, music, PE, they have, because of our scheduling, they have some open times. And what they're doing is they are going in and working with students in small groups in the classroom when they're not teaching their own subjects this year. Uh, uh, we adopted a Reading Horizons phonics program this year. That was a heavy lift last year, but it's one where we had originally chosen it for kindergarten. And then we had a couple of first grade teachers that were teaching in a summer school and they liked it so much that the word kind of got out and I did not require first grade to do it and they adopted it on their own. So we're feeling really good uh, about that, getting a lot of feedback. And that goes back to, you know, we had the 64% for the phonics piece, but again, good, but we want to do better. And what we had been doing got us to good. And so we wanted to move something to get us to better. So yeah. that's what. Reading Horizons, isn't that the same one that Keith is doing at Taylor? Yes. I thought he told us about it. Mm -hmm. okay. And I believe, I believe they're doing it at Northeast. I believe. They are. Okay. They are. They are. Um, so we're really feeling good about that. And then uh, cross grade teaming buddy classes. So now we have kindergarten and first grade classes that are meeting on a regular basis and working together. And we think that that's important, A, for our kindergartners to see what first grade is like, but also for our first grade teachers especially to see what's going on in the kindergarten classroom so that we can increase that conversation uh, across grade level. So that's something that we're doing. So from the academic piece, that's uh, in a nutshell. I just wanted to talk real quick about PBIS, and this really will be quick. Uh, feeling very good about PBIS this year. Uh, we've kind of reconstituted our team. Uh, we have a new teacher to our school, but not to Beaufort County, that's heading that up, and he is kind of a guru with that. And he and we're just we're really feeling good about it. And here's some of the new things. Well, some of the things that we're doing. Some new, some old. Uh, weekly caught being good recognition so students uh, when we see a student doing something that they ought to they get a they get a certificate or a little mm -hmm. a little piece of paper about this size caught being good and we do a weekly drawing so so that you know we, we don't want to call out bad behavior <coughs> in public but rather see students working for something positive um, month, uh, we also have monthly celebrations for good behavior that's our terrific kids program that we do as well as for students that have have been good for an entire month so uh, that could be a movie that could be uh, a popsicle party it could be I mean these are kindergartners and first graders so it doesn't have to be uh, too big but that's uh, something else we're doing um, school-wide implementation of whole class recognitions with our beaver care hearts and what that is is if anyone sees a, a whole class following our beavers care expectations which are calm bodies, appropriate voices, respectful actions, and everyone ready to learn, then that whole class can be rewarded. But it has to be everybody, not a little Johnny in the back screwing around and everybody else is good. Everybody has to do it. And I will share with you uh, some of our high flyers, our toughest guys, are the ones that are really working hard because they want to see that happen. Uh, uh, another thing, and this is a culture piece at Eastern, and we're doing this through PBIS, is monthly recognitions of teachers and staff. So every month, uh, we have a staff member, uh, uh, we have a kindergarten teacher, a first grade teacher, and then uh, kind of a catch-all pre-K, EC, our other teachers, as well as TAs that are nominated and being recognized. So, and that's something that we have not done in the past. And we have had a lot of, uh, 
a lot of good feedback for that. And then the last thing is uh, with our behavior piece is our staff mentors for our high flyers. Uh, it's a check-in and check-out system. And the reason that we're doing this uh, is currently 10 students make up over half of all of our discipline referrals. So, you know, discipline at Eastern wholesale is not a problem. I should know because <laughs> I'm the one that gets called down there when it is. But I can also tell you that there's 10 students that take up the majority of my time when it comes to discipline. And so these are some things that we're trying to implement for those you mean students. the same 10 the, students? Yeah, the same 10 students. Yeah. Uh, you know, most kids, if they ever come to the office, it's once. Uh, but, you know, just like everything in life, there's a small group of people that kind of keep you busy all the time. And so that, that's what's going on with us. So in a nutshell, that's what we're doing. Uh, I hope that was informative. Do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions? I know you're going to always, and Ms. Makepeace was there for a short time, the physical layout of Eastern is always going to be a challenge for collaboration. It is. And um, But I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're trying to overcome that in any way you can. <coughs> Excuse me. It's, it always has been. Long before either one of you were ever there, it's just all the physical layout is really a challenge. Well, I will say that I think that our weekly meetings, our data meetings that we're having are going a long way for that because we have the same agenda for every group. So they're coming in and having the same conversation. And when we're having that same conversation, I'm able to say to pod one, hey, you know what, when we meet with pod three, they mentioned this, that, mm -hmm. the other. So th there is some sharing that's going on that maybe wouldn't be necessarily available otherwise. So okay. thank you so much for your time. Thank you thank for all you. your support. Have thank a Merry you. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. All right. Hello. Hello. All right, I'm going to be fast, hopefully. Because I'm going to have a conversation with you guys like I have with my staff, and we're just going to be very honest. All right. Um, I just want to share some of our school profile because this has changed a lot since I first um, got there just three years ago. We are up to 79 ESL kids. We started with 15. So we've got 79 ESL kids, 100 AIG, and 62 EC kids that make up 505 of our student body. So I did just want to share some of that. Some of our demographics have changed, have shifted as well. So you can take a look at that. You have those in front of you. Our testing data, I went ahead and put 2015, 16, 16, 17, and 17, 18. Um, 15, 16, I was not there. And when I came the um, summer of 2016, I lost 12 teachers. I had to replace 12 teachers. And so we are just kind of getting our the right people in place. And so I really believe that that was the big dip in scores. If you look at 15, 16 to 16, 17, um, replacing 12, a lot of them came from Eastern to teach in kindergarten and first grade. They'd never taught fourth or fifth grade before, but they've got their groove. Um, we, this is not data that we are proud of, but I want to point it out because we've got so much positive momentum going on right now with what we've got in the, the school and in the classes. Um, we went from not meeting last year or two years ago at, to meeting growth this year. Our biggest struggle is going to be math, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, with language arts, that's, our, that's how our proficiency looks, and you can take a look. It looks, the graphs make it look a lot worse, but um, with implementing Wit and Wisdom last year, we dipped in fourth grade 1.1 percent, and in fifth grade we dipped um, 1.8 percent, which I felt like for a new implementation year, that was not bad at all, especially we only covered three of the four modules. We got off to such a slow start. Um, everybody was just feeling it out, and, and they weren't really sure um, really how to implement the program, so they were reading it page by page. Now we've got a lot of things in place where we're visiting other classrooms and making it our own. So again, we've got a lot of momentum with wit and wisdom. Our teachers love it. The kids love it. The fifth grade teacher actually said that the kids, she's never seen the kids come so prepared um, to respond to questions and their writing is, is beautiful. So that is very exciting. Um, a big focus for us though has been math. Um, two years ago, we started Engage New York and in fourth grade, you can see we went from 59.7% to 44% and that was like 
pour my heart out. Um, I, I really think that a lot of that had to do with my teachers wanted to do the right thing and I wanted to do the right thing as a new principal and implement what we were told to implement, but we just didn't have the support. We went and visited other schools that did it, um, that were implementing Engage New York, but there's just not a lot of PD and you can't just throw something on somebody and not have support and professional development throughout the year. Um, so that has been tough. That has been a major, major focus with us. And then science. Um, we've had a major dip in science um, and I think again we've only had with those 12 teachers half of that well most of them were science teachers so we're we're building momentum with that um, we've also moved some um, we used to do right flight in the spring when we taught science we don't do that anymore we do it in the fall so it doesn't that's two whole weeks of curriculum uh, I'm sorry two whole weeks of instructional days that we now teach during social studies not during the science so that's two more weeks we can put on to teaching science um, I, I will say we are looking into stem scopes because we have the Be the Beaufort County pacing guide but there's just not a lot of resources for science and so we are looking outside of our county for things that work in other schools um, 2016-17 we only met growth in fourth grade reading but last year the only thing we did not meet growth in was fourth grade math so we are growing we're getting there but two years of two new curriculums has been tough on us it's been a big learning curve um, looking at our subgroups the two that we did not meet in were our AIG kids and our black subgroup um, I think and, and we've talked a lot about this of, of how we're going to meet these needs I think the AIG subgroup has been because we've had two new curriculums they're used to doing a lot of things independently and because the teachers were unfamiliar with a lot of the curriculum they didn't really they didn't give them the reins to just go like they're used to so I think that they have been held back the past couple years it looks completely different in the classrooms this year now that the teachers are familiar with the curriculum um, and then the black subgroup we we have the data to show that small groups work so we are working that into every single classroom so that is something that we do a lot of learning walks um, teachers visiting other classrooms so some changes that we have made um, we have abandoned for the most part engage New York and we are now following DPI's NC instructional framework for mathematics um, this has been a very powerful thing for us the kids are um, given tasks and lessons and it's actually coming straight from DPI we hired a math coach Leslie Holly who um, worked very hard on this framework and it that has been the biggest change for us because what she does is she brings what is coming straight from DPI and brings it straight to us um, and so we know of all the changes and she works with the math team every single Tuesday and Wednesday getting to the students to understand not the students the teachers to understand the standards because like I said my, I have wonderful teachers but I just don't think they understood how to teach engage um, now I have I see teachers who they are finally themselves again I'm like you, you look like yourself again um, and the students you'll see it in a second you'll see the data proves it um, Leslie also brings in um, different monthly professional developments um, the first one we had was with um, an ECU, ECU professor who was one of the writers and co-principals for the framework so she gave us the background of the framework and why different um, standards are where they are um, she also did read aloud some other changes we made are teacher walks um, within the wit and wisdom teachers are making it their own they're learning um, Google classroom Google expeditions um, so it's not like they were before kind of reading from a book um, we're also supplementing vocabulary into our daily ELA lessons which has been huge that has helped so much because wit and wisdom does not cover everything <coughs> Excuse me. an emphasis on small group instruction which again I have the data you know I had three teachers that exceeded growth and they all did small group instruction last year and it was beautiful so we are using those teachers as mentors 
Um, we've also added a coding class to our weekly schedule, and the kids are loving that. Kids that have not that aren't necessarily successful in the classroom are learning these coding um, skills, and it's it's rubbing off into their other classes because they have learned how to be successful in the classroom. So they're actually role models to their peers like, oh, you figured out how to do that? And it's just a really neat <coughs> thing. So that has just started, but that's been wonderful. Um, here's just an example of we are seeing some immediate results. Um, these are the results from our NC check-in um, that we took in was it October. Was it October? And um, I just wanted to share that we went from being bottom of the totem pole in, in fourth grade math to now we are leading all the schools in that first check-in. We raised our scores from first check-in 14% and 7% 7 in fifth grade. Um, so that is something that gave my teachers the momentum to see what you're doing is working. Um, they all put in the work every single day. We just needed some support at the school level and so we they're getting that now so we are excited we work and the ela results look just like this we're excited for where we're going so we've made some changes and they've been very positive and very the um the kids have responded well and the teachers are very confident in their practice and that's it any questions Anyone with any questions? Looks like you're on the right path. Yes. Like I said, we the best part about the John Small staff is nobody is okay with being average. We all want to be so much better. Even with those scores, you know, they saw them set, they saw their scores at the top, and they were like, "Why? Well, I, I thought we'd be better." Like th they wanted to be better. So th it's just a group of hardworking teachers. So who are there for the kids? Well, thank you. Ms. Peck? All right, I think I'm the only thing that stands between you guys and dinner. So. <laughs> oh, no, we've got some stuff. You've got a few things. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, that's exactly okay, right. Yes, you're right. You're yes. right. And we're all really <laughs> hungry, so let's <laughs> you do it. <laughs> Uh, it's my pleasure to present the uh, Early College High School testing data for the 2017-2018 school year. Um, this is a yearly comparison of the school report card. And if you look in the last column, the 2018 um, school year, 2017-2018, we um, increased in almost every indicator. English <coughs> 2 proficiency, 98%. Per percent. This actually comes <coughs> to one student not being proficient on the exam. Uh, math 1 proficiency was 96. This, again, is one student not being proficient. Our biology proficiency for the 2018 year was 100%, uh, percent, which is fantastic. Uh, ACT proficiency, 94. This is about three students that did not meet the composite, the 17 composite score that they must have uh, that considers them career and college ready. Our ACT work keys, we have students every year that take the work keys assessment, but we do not have enough to have an indicator uh, for that section. But our students do always make the, pl the platinum uh, and gold um, levels. Our four-year graduation rate, we've had 100% for the past four years, and our students have always completed the math three. So our overall achievement was 99 out of 100. Um, I'm super excited about what the students did and what the teachers did in their hard work. So that's 80% of the NC report card, and the growth composite comes up to 20%, and we were at 90% uh, for that. So we exceeded growth. This is the third year um, in a row that the early college has exceeded growth, and our school performance was a 97 overall. So to really look at the growth component, uh, this is the first year that biology growth was not added into uh, the growth um, portion of the NC report card. And just so you know, as long as, you, as long as the teacher or the students perform higher than a two, then they've exceeded growth. And so for our Math 1 um, curriculum, the teacher went from a 1.6 the year before to a 3.92 uh, last school year. And then for English 2, um, the, the teachers have looked at all of this data as well, and I tell them that this is exactly the trend that I want to see with every teacher. She continues to do better year after year. She does better than the year before. So she was at 1.9, and then last year she ended at 2.51. 
So some positive trends. Uh, this is the fourth year in a row that we've had the highest report card grade in the Northeast region. We are ranked number 11 in the state when comparing growth and school performance grades. And this is out of 2,400 schools in the state. We are ranked number 11. So I thought that was huge. We're in the top 15% for, over, for overall school growth in the state. And um, even more importantly, this is the third year that we've had 100% staff retention. And the staff works really well together. They have great rapport. And they can work on ways to improve student um, performance. A few areas that uh, we exceeded growth. Uh, we exceeded growth in all of the subject areas except for two. And we have 16 subjects. Um, and the two areas were English 3 and English 4, so that will be a focus area um, next semester and next year. We exceeded growth with the low and middle uh, performing students and also with our economically disadvantaged students. Effective strategies. Uh, we collect data before EVOS is released. Uh, all of this data that we all receive, we do not receive this until November. Well, our students start in August. So we pull from the year before. So our eighth graders that are moving um, in as ninth graders. We look at their Lexile scores, their reading scores, their quantile scores. And we, kind of, we have an idea of who's at risk before they even come into the classroom <laughs> so we can give them that support. And then we can also look at our high achievers and make sure that they are reading um, text that's above their Lexile level that will um, encourage them to move, move um, up. Early interventions um, are also a key. That's it's been an effective strategy for the for the teachers and students. Um, any student that is performing with a 70 or below in any subject area is put in a monitoring chart, and we contact parents, offer tutoring, give some more online resources, and by the second progress report time after six weeks in the semester, if they haven't shown improvement, then we pull in the parents and have a teacher, parent, and student conference. To try to figure out what is uh, what's going on. Peer tutors are in all math classes. Um, our school-wide expectations have also helped in parent conferences. A couple of examples of the data cards that we use. I took out the student's name, but we have a digital student data card for every student at the school, and it keeps track of everything um, that they've done so far and also their career interests. These cards are shared with all teachers, the guidance counselor, and myself, so we meet with the students. We'll know exactly what they want to do. Um, this student wanted to do something in the medical field. We can have conversations about GPA, what they're going to need to move on to the next um, stage. We've got their Lexile levels, pre-ACT scores, and this student hasn't yet taken the NCDAP, the college placement for reading and math, but those are some also some um, testing scores that we, we talk about with the students. Um, the cumulative assessments you can see in the second column with biology, every teacher um, gives cumulative assessments to identify weak areas with the students. This is an example of the interventions that I was um, referencing earlier. Uh, once a student scores below a 70, we add them to a shared Google Doc and we talk about things that we can do to help the student. So our focus area, as I mentioned earlier, 14 out of the 16 subject areas exceeded growth. English 3 and English 4 met growth, but we would like to see all of our subjects succeed. So those are going to be our focus areas um, next year. Next spring will be English 4 and um, English 3 next fall. Um, and our literacy focus in all subject areas to improve performance. And that is it. And if you have any questions. Well, those are just pitiful results. <laughs> <laughs> no, congratulations. Thank what you. a what a well deserved honor. We expect tenth next year. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, Top thank tip. you. Yeah, uh, we'll try. Being a little bit there is still room for growth. Yes. So. Thank you all for, job. for thank coming you. in tonight. I appreciate it, and have a merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. Madam Chairman, Miss Makepeace also had to drive a bus this afternoon, so yeah. she. I, I came in a little bit drive a bus I stopped both traffic both of the traffic on River Road I text I text Mark I said you get any complaints it was me I was on River Road I had my flashers on and everybody was stopped for about 10 minutes <laughs> well I live on River Road and everybody's always very quick to tell me a bus number that acted inappropriately well, so I will be prepared that she <laughs> did very well in the press I bet she did thank you for doing Good job. that <laughs> All right, uh, moving along, we've got some action items and I'm going to let Mark 
go over those with us. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 8.1 approval of school improvement plans. Now that all the schools have presented, I would like to ask the board to approve their school improvement plans for the, the 1920 school year. Okay. Excuse me, 18, I'm ahead, year ahead, 18 19. Approval. I'll second. <laughs> all those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Motion carried. <laughs> all right. 8.2, these are the policies that received from the uh, North Carolina School Board Association. They were on first reading last uh, meeting. Uh, there have been no changes. Uh, just looking for approval. Do we have a motion? So move. Second. Second. All right. Uh, all those uh, in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. All right. I had uh, brought to you uh, the, a possible change to policy 5220, uh, collections and solicitations. There's only been one change. It's been highlighted in number three. It now reads, school-wide fundraising projects shall be limited to three per year. In addition to the two school-wide projects, officially recognized student organizations are permitted to conduct four annual fundraising projects. All the rest of the policy is the same. Uh, with the board's permission, I would ask that we waive first reading if at your pleasure and accept, go ahead and make the change tonight. Okay, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. There you go. <laughs> It's okay. We have one opposed. <laughs> no, I won't either. No. Okay. And then <laughs> policy 8.4, um, this was uh, the policy of revision to policy 9300 about naming facilities. You have two choices because I think the board liked all of the policy. And the only difference is the very last paragraph, the first version reads, all requests for naming a facility must be put in writing and submitted to the chairman of the board. The letter should contain a summary of significant accomplishments and endeavors of the school system. The chairman may appoint one or more committees of board members to recommend or approve naming of such facilities, which could be the, being brought before the entire board. The other version of this policy, and the reason it's here is because this was the Dare County version, was the superintendent shall submit a recommended name or list of recommended names to the board for approval. And so that was the only difference that was the major difference between our existing policy where ours kept the language that, that would come to the chairman of the board and then the board would decide versus the superintendent would bring it to the board and the board would decide. The rest of it leaves intact the things I believe that you liked in terms of the qualifications for why we would name a facility after someone. Is there so. any discussion on this? Does anybody have a preference? One way or another, all the decision whatever is made needs to be made by the whole board. Right. The first version is a little more in line with your existing policy because it keeps the language about the board. The second one is okay. it has that last sentence is more about the from the school system where we saw this one and like this one. So. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, somebody want to make a motion on one of these? If there's no motion, there's no change. So have we... I mean, is, so these one of these is changing what we currently have. Both right? of them both are of them, both yeah. of them are changing what you currently have. Tell what me the difference you, in the two of them again. All right, the last pair. The, last the, last pair. the first the first one is more in line with your current policy, where the chairman of the board brings the submission before either a committee or the entire board. The second one says the superintendent would recommend the name, so they would the superintendent would be the one to bring it before the board. It's just I'm not splitting hairs. I can't speak for anybody else, but for me now, I, uh, it wouldn't matter to me personally whether the chairman brings it or the superintendent. It's still a board vote. Correct. We, we're, we're approving one of these two, is what you're saying. Right. It, assuming okay. that you want to allow naming of facilities, your current policy doesn't allow you to name them at all, and we have to waive it every time someone does a request. So this would allow you to stop waiving it and uh, name under certain conditions. Yeah, I, I think for future chairman, I think the. Uh, I'll make a motion that the second one be approved. That the superintendent comes with the uh, change. Recommendation. And we have a second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes for the second one. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, and that brings us to the calendar for January 19th. Um, I have not, uh, because he is out of town, I believe, um, have not been able to talk with the new superintendent to see if he had um, a desire to meet with us prior to the 15th. So we'll just share these dates unless we have a, 
a, a conflict some, with somebody now, um, we'll share these dates and then if he wants something prior to the 15th, I'll, we'll let him make that contact if that's okay with everybody. I have no idea, you know, what his plans are, but last last week we decided on the 15th and the 29th. Yeah. Does anybody have a problem with those dates? The 29th is going to be a bind, but I'll, if I have to leave, I just have to leave. Okay. Okay. All right. And and by then we will have had at least the one meeting mm -hmm. uh, with Mr. Cheeseman. So if there needs to be, we have time to make a an adjustment if we need to. Matt, just remind me. No. Anybody else have a problem with those dates? I will not be. I'll I'll be out of town on the 29th. Sounds like the 29th might be an issue then for a couple of us. Well, if it's okay, we'll relook at that mm -hmm. with Mr. Cheeseman. Is that all right with everybody? All right. All right. Board member updates. Butch, have they had an event um, for uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Coach Proctor? I saw there was one event. Has there been anything, any movement toward the, the naming of the gym? You want to... They're, I know it's still, I think they're looking at that. Okay. I was just wondering if that yeah. needed to be announced. What I, what I was told is it's not going to happen this year because, oh, okay. um, Are they, I think they wanted to wait till the summer because of the, you may have more updated information than I do. Oh, uh, you can share it later. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I, let me confirm what I was told. Okay. Do that. I, I don't, I don't want to tell it wrong. I understand. I understand. But I, um, just so we know, so that yeah, if it's going to happen, it is. I mean, we, it's been approved and it's it's going to happen. But I don't think it's not going to be able to happen before okay. basketball season this year. So. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, any other board member updates? All right. I uh, just want a reminder that uh, Friday, December 21st, is a three-hour early, early release day for our students, and uh, we're headed to uh, for winter break, and students will not return until January 7th, so they will have 16 days. So we hope that uh, while everybody is celebrating the holidays, that they try every chance they get to get our kids to read while they're home, and I hope everybody gets a book for Christmas, because we need to keep the momentum that we've got going. So we need to, just because we're going to be at home doesn't mean you can't read a little bit. Um, I would, first of all, I would like to say this will be my last board meeting as the interim superintendent. Please don't cheer. Uh, I would like to thank the staff and uh, administrative staff, the teachers, uh, our entire set of employees. I could not have been more supportive and more, uh, they've been great uh, to work with this entire time. I absolutely have to single out Miss Lisa Duke and Miss Cindy Apple, whom I would not have survived without. And I appreciate the board's faith in me, and I appreciate even more the opportunity to return to my regular seat at the next <laughs> meeting. Let's say, now we're not done with you by a long no, shot. I'll be so right over there. <laughs> we, so. we appreciate it so very much, Mark. You've done a remarkable job. Not that we had any doubt. And uh, Thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. And I know Mr. Hodges conveyed that last meeting as well. We really do appreciate what you've done. Thank you. We look forward to uh, Mr. Cheeseman starting after the first of the year. And um, uh, I, I want to take the time to wish everybody here a very Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, safe travels if you're traveling, uh, stay away from the viruses that are out there, stay healthy, and uh, anybody else have anything to add? I think Mr. Dunn at least deserves a round of applause. Yes, he does. <laughs> and as, as our appreciation, we're going to treat you to dinner tonight. Dinner tonight. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. I bet I have seafood. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe some oysters. <laughs> Can I entertain one more motion? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, keep your uh, thoughts to yourself. <laughs> <laughs>